Steve Dotto here, and today we're going to take a look at Apple's Mail, or an improvement, I hope an improvement, to Apple's Mail. I have spoken in the past about what I think of Apple's Mail, and in a word, it's... I hate it. I just... It's, it's free, which is awesome, but it sucks, which is terrible. So I have been on a search to find a better mail client. It's one of the few areas that we know our Windows brethren are way ahead because they get Outlook. Not that Outlook is all that fantastic, but Outlook integrates nicely with all of its calendaring and its uh, contacts. And Apple Mail tries to do that, but it doesn't do a very good job. So I've been searching and I may have found a solution. I'm not a thousand percent sure that Postbox is the answer, but I'm giving it a real solid run because I like what I see so far. So this is the app that we're gonna look at. It's called Postbox. It's very, very expensive. It costs $9.95 for a license. Uh, and it's available for both Mac and Windows. So if you happen to, to want the Windows version, you know, this is, this is an app that'll work for you as well. Uh, I'm not sure that there's as much value to the Windows world because you do have Outlook. So I'm gonna download this and we're gonna walk through the install process because a big part of switching over to a mail client is, or trying a new mail client, is how much work is it to actually install it and get it working. Uh, they've done a good job with Postbox. I'm gonna show you how we can get it up and running very quickly. You can try it out for a little while, see if you like it as do I. And here of course is Apple's mail, uh, as we're used to. And the issues that I have around Apple mail are just, the main issues are integration. I mean, it works fine as an email client. I don't like the nesting too much, how it nests messages. I tend to, things tend to get lost to me and I occasionally miss things in Apple Mail and it confuses me. I find it a confusing interface at times. And it shouldn't be because I'm a, I'm a pretty much a veteran computer guy. So let's let's open up Postbox and let's have, a, let's have a look at the app itself and what happens when we actually start installing it, uh, the, the process that we go through. Uh, it's free to start uh, for, I think you get it for, 30 days for free before you have to pay that whole $10. Here's a, a key, a migration assistant. Import everything from Thunderbird, SeaMonkey, Netscape, Mozilla, or Apple Mail, of course. So I'm gonna import from Apple Mail because if you look over here in my Apple Mail folder or my inbox, um, you see I've got a lot of folders. I've got a lot of investment of time in the structure of Apple Mail already. And that's one thing that will hold a lot of people back from switching over to a different client is how do I recreate all these folders? How do I move everything into the folders? Because even though we shouldn't, we often use our email as a filing system. And that's something that we probably shouldn't do, but we do. So that's the real world uh, situation. So here we see that uh, it's importing all of the different folders and all the settings. And I also have multiple accounts in Apple Mail. I've got my accounts. I've got accounts for some, some people, uh, some community groups that I work for. I've got for my show, my personal email. All of my different accounts are here in, the, in this one interface. So I want to make sure that it all comes across. A big uh, a big asset to Postbox, if it is indeed going to end up becoming the mail client I use all the time, is if it brings this all across without me having to worry too much or think too much and have too much downtime. We don't want downtime, do we? So it's done. Okay, it's opening. Postbox set it as the default client. That's a, you know what? I can do this again. <laughs> well, I'll get it to start it. I'm not going to check. I'm not going to make it my default client yet. I'm just quite not quite ready for a permanent commitment yet. Okay, so I've got to do some password entering. I spent the last 10 or 15 minutes putting in all of my passwords, trying to remember all of my passwords, and letting Postbox download all of the uh, all of the email in my accounts, and it did a great job. The import function seemed to work perfectly as far as my accounts goes. All of my passwords didn't seem to come in cleanly. I'm not too sure what happened there. I had to enter my passwords. Maybe it didn't bring the passwords in at all. I'm not sure. Uh, but since I don't use those passwords all that often, because it's they're they're kind of preset in your software, uh, I had to remember them, and so that took me a few minutes. Once I was done though, all of my email has come in. Uh, two issues. The first issue is the biggest issue. I wanted all of my folders. If we, Let me move these to side by side so you can see. Here is my, on the left hand side of the screen is my Apple Mail and on the right hand side of the screen is my Postbox account. My biggest concern was making sure that all of these folders came in so that I would not have to uh, reorganize all of the email that I've stored in those folders for a variety of reasons. And when I first looked at the screen here on the right hand side, when I first looked at Postbox, I did not see those folders and I went, ah, oh no. Now I'm not positive if I did something a little bit wrong when I first installed it or, uh, or I missed something, but 
they actually end up getting installed here on my Mac. Here's all of the different folders. Now, what I actually did though, was I went and I imported, I went import because I didn't see them in the first place. I went here and I imported mail. And when I clicked import mail, it then went through and it actually designated each mailbox. I could see it doing it and then they appeared. So this might be a second step that you have to do in the process. I did it and it installed it properly, but I don't know for sure that it wasn't done already properly. I can't say that with, with, with any degree of confidence. But regardless, a, one way or the other, we got all of our folders imported in and all of the email that belongs in those folders is in those folders, so we are in great shape. Now, there was a, the second issue that I have with Postbox, and I know this from my first tests of it. I first installed it on a notebook and played with it on a notebook for a little while before I decided to install it on my main computer here, is it doesn't do out of the box the same kind of spam filtering as my Apple Mail. And it actually sort of does, but the, all of those spam messages ended up in my inbox. And I went, oh, okay, what's going on here? Here's what you have to do, and what one of the things I would do right away with this software is open your preferences, go into your account settings, and in each of your accounts, in each and every one of these accounts here in your settings, there is junk settings. What you have to do is you have to go through and manually tell it in each of these accounts. It will designate that email as junk mail, but it won't actually move it into a junk folder unless you tell it to move it into a junk folder. So by going through, you can go through and you can choose to move it all into your junk folder. And you have junk folders in each one of your accounts. So you can, so you can adjust, it's going to choose the topmost account, but you can basically move all of your junk email into your junk folders. And I would recommend actually that you make all of your junk email go into a single junk folder. So you can occasionally go into it and look through it. So actually I should go back into my first junk settings here and say, don't send it by there, but instead send it into the Dottotech account. And the second one here, make sure that it's going into Dottotech. The third junk settings here, going to oh, it's going into Gmail. Let's send it into Dottotech, and so you can uh, so you can go through and you can make sure all of the junk automatically as it comes into your account is flowed into those folders. So that's the issues around setup. Now I've got it installed. Why do I like this software so much? That is a great question. What were the things that compelled me? Two features that I saw out of the gate really compelled me with this product. And the first is, look right here in the top. It has Evernote integration right out of the box. When I use my Apple Mail, what I would do is if there was a note that, if there was an email that I wanted to store in Evernote, which I do with a lot of email, uh, I would have to send it to my Evernote inbox and then I'd have to go into Evernote and I'd have to sort it. Instead, I can choose here. Let's just choose uh, this, this Christmas greeting. And let's say I wanna save it. I simply click on Evernote here and it brings up a window, which is basically an Evernote note that allows me to choose right away. Here's all of my Evernote notebooks. So I can choose and I can uh, fire email directly out of my email software right into Evernote where it's properly stored, where I can add all of my tags. See, I can click right into this and I can add tagging to it. That alone is a good reason, I think, for moving to Postbox. The second really compelling feature that I found that made me really want to embrace Postbox was some integration with uh, a to-do list manager that I really like and I've been using a lot. It's called Things. It's a really rich list building and management tool. And here's how that works within, within, uh, within Postbox. If I here have, say, a block of text that I decide that I want to keep, and for whatever reason I decide I want to keep this and add this to a note, I want to make it a to-do or I want to store it as a note within my list, of, within my list software, I right-click the mouse and now I can make it as a, as a selection or as a title for a new things to do. So I click on that and they see it automatically creates a to do, which I then save. And that new to do is now a part of things. And things has really nice integration to my iPad and my iPhone and, and through my whole, my whole kind of productivity ecosphere. So that is a nice piece of integration as well. The last piece that I was really looking for is calendar integration. And I don't have time to go into all of the calendar integration with you today. Uh, and I wish it was a little bit more uh, self-evident how it, how it works with calendars, but a little bit of poking around within the Postbox website will show you an application called Lightning, or it's actually an add-on 
to Postbox, which will, you can install, and that creates a calendar right within the email software itself. I like that. They also have the ability to integrate it with Google Calendar or with Microsoft Exchange Calendar. So it is going to fit in your world if you use any of those uh, two main calendar apps or if you want to use the, an internal calendar, if you want to commit it all to, the, to its own calendar, you can do that as well. The very last thing I'm going to show you, and I like this for a variety of reasons, is it reduces clutter. One thing I don't like about Apple Mail is every time I open a new email, it tends to open it in a new window, a whole new window. And I'm sure there's a setting that I could have changed, but that's the way it's set up and, and it just does that. Within, within Postbox, every time I open a new email, it keeps it in a, in a kind of a tabbed browser type interface right within the email software. So I find that my computer screen is a little less cluttered. You might notice that the preferences are automatically for it not to download graphics, so you can change those settings, of course, but it's kind of a throwback to our old dial-up modem days as well with not downloading all sorts of extra graphics, which you can turn on or off if you choose. Overall, I'm going to give Postbox a run for the next couple of months. I think it might just end up being a better solution than Apple Mail. It might not be perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. I hope that you found this little video today useful. I know it's a little bit on the long side, but if you're still with us and you've enjoyed it, why not give us a like or at least maybe subscribe to our videos. You will find that we produce about one per week, and we certainly appreciate you spending your time with us today. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for tuning in.